Today we're going to look at extending some of the functionality we learned in the last Associative Path podcast by using assembly groups to enhance our animation capabilities. The goal in this exercise is to create an animation of an object that moves along this conveyor, have it rotate, as well as create a path along the conveyor. We'll also add a couple of tips and tricks we can do using assembly groups. So let's get started. Let's add an assembly group right away. So we're going to just go create an assembly group and we'll call this master. And if I'm in translation mode, I can see where that assembly group is actually created by the icon here. And we want to drop that up and bring it into a better location. So to help, I'm going to turn off perspective mode and then just go to a, a side view and then a top view. Drag that up a little bit. I'll go to a top view again and drag this down. That's about where I want that assembly group to start. Next, I want to add a geometry primitive. So under geometry, I'm going to just select a cube, create a cube, and I'll drop that right about on top of this assembly group. So now I've got a little cube that's going to rotate along, move along this object. And next, I'm going to take this primitive and drop it into the master assembly. Now I can start animating. I've got my setup here. And in assembly mode, which is this little button, I'm going to click that and select the master assembly. And again, let's go to the top view to help our movements here, make it a little bit easier. And I'm just going to run out to about two seconds, drag this up to just before the curve. And then at four seconds, we'll drag it to the other side. And then we'll, we'll add a another four seconds animate all the way down to this side and then two seconds more drag it right to here now I could drag this back on top at 12 seconds but I want to copy this first key but I only want the key for the movement of the assembly not the primitive because otherwise it'll start moving back and it'll actually set a key there so I'm going to filter the keys for just assembly. Now I can grab this key, hold my control button down, and drag it out to 12 seconds. So that'll put it at the place it started, exactly in the same position. So it moves along a path, and like in our last podcast, we're going to change this path to, instead of linear, we're going to go to custom. That's going to drop those handles out here and let us start to tweak those. And remember, we want to try and always keep these as tangent as possible. And I want to bring those out to about the middle of the uh, conveyor there. So we see that red path is about in the middle. And I can tweak around there. I'll grab this side and do the same thing. About here. And we're going to tweak that back just a little bit. So now I've got the assembly of that cube moving around the conveyor, but not rotating. The cube's not rotating and following that path. So I'm going to take this out of assembly mode, and just select the primitive, and then we'll go up to two seconds again, and we can start rotating this. Actually, right here we want to hold it, so we set a location key, and then at three seconds we want to have that rotate minus 90 degrees so it animates up and starts to rotate around that curve. A couple of ways we can do that. I can rotate and again I can click and numerically type in minus 90 or at four seconds here as long as grid snapping is on I can click and hold this and it's going to want to snap at 45 degree increments so we got 45 and then there's minus 90 then we'll go up to eight seconds here and set a key for that to hold it. Then at nine seconds, we're going to just rotate that around another 90 degrees. And then at 10 seconds, we'll rotate it one more minus 90. And now that's going to follow along nicely, rotating around the curve and moving along the conveyor. So just like last time, 
we can start to do a couple more things with this. Back in assembly mode, I want to create that path so it'll have some arrows or lines to follow this. So I'm going to go ahead at, at time zero again and create a path, an associate path from animation. And then we'll change a couple of things on it so I can see the path being generated. And now I can select the path in the collaboration tree or I could actually just select it by hand. But we'll make that solid and red just like last time. Maybe kick up the width a little bit so we can see that draw a nice curved path. But we can do a little bit more. We can actually show instead of just being solid we can go to our advanced properties and add different things like different symbols anywhere along the path. In this case I'll just add a bold arrow. Maybe make the space between a little bit bigger and we'll actually make the arrow size a little bit bigger. So we see these arrows come up there. Maybe that's a little bit too big. So. And now I've got the path, I've got the arrows. Everything's working nicely. But since we were in assembly mode, there's a few other things I can do to this object. And that is I can add and maybe replace geometry. I can paste things into this assembly. I can copy things to follow this assembly. So let's just first of all add another object to replace here. So I'm going to go open and I'm going to open up this part and merge it into this document. And now we see we've got a little part down here that again isn't in necessarily in the right location. So before I copy this into the other assembly, I'm going to move that. And again, I'll go back over to the side view so I can get that in position. I could use some of the uh, alignment tools if I wanted to, but in this case it's very, very easy to do. So I'm going to drop that into the, the right position. And now I can take this assembly part and instead of dragging it into this master, I'm going to drag that underneath the primitive. So it'll follow the same path that the primitive took. And I can take my original primitive and just fade that object out. So now we see that moving along the path. And again, there's other things we can do with this. Since we did this all in assembly mode, I can actually take this master assembly and copy it. So I'll go ahead and take the master assembly, copy the actors, and I want to paste it into the root level assembly. And now if I look at it, it looks like I've only got one, but I've actually got two that are right on top of each other. So I'm going to have this, as long as the keys are filtered, I'm going to offset these keys a little bit here. So I'm going to grab all these keys and just move them one second out. And we see that moving up, but it's not rotating at the, the right point. So I'm going to take the primitive assembly, the second assembly part, this one. And we're going to go ahead and, and move those keys as well since it's filtered. Grab these out and move those to one second as well. So now we've got it coming up, moving around. And if we wanted to, at time zero, since that primitive was here, we could move that up or fade it out, have it drop in. We can do a lot of different things. So I'm just going to take that primitive again and at time zero, in this case, I'll just have it completely op op faded out. And actually we can take the uh, assembly part here too and have that fade out. And then at one second, we'll just fade, fade it back in. Actually, maybe a little bit more than one second. We'll use the effects and say fade in. 
So now we've got a couple of objects moving along that primitive. There's just a couple of things you can do using assembly groups and, and animating in assembly groups. So hopefully you've learned something and good luck.